Hello YouTube, I'm Dakota and welcome to Bowtide Media. We are here with a brand new review of Charlie's Fun You Can Feel. Charlie's back with his seventh studio album in just six years, man. I've been pumping them out. For those of you unaware, Charlie is the real name and primary alias of Dumu. Dumu was the alias he used for a more electronic sounding, primarily future-based soundscape uh, that primarily released under the Monster Cat label. But back in late 2021, Charlie had actually announced the indefinite hiatus of that Dumu alias, citing a loss of connection with that alias, as well as finding fulfillment in other areas of music. And while there have been some releases here and there and a couple of smaller EPs since that indefinite hiatus announcement, this is the first full length album from Charlie we've gotten since that announcement. So holistically, let's talk about this record. Fun You Can Feel is really that. Fun You Can Feel. All throughout the track list, there is this lively and celebratory tone. It's that intangible feeling of good company and lasting memories. Written with a party of good friends, Charlie self describes this record as written with help and inspiration from my friends. And yes, for the most part, a majority of music is written with the help and inspiration from friends and peers, uh, but that sense of camaraderie is very apparent in this record. At 17 and a half minutes across seven tracks, this LP is by no means long-winded. In fact, not a single track off this album hits the three minute mark. And while I would normally take issue with such a short runtime, Charlie really does make the most out of each minute. With little space for a lasting or long intro or outro, these tracks really do straight cut to the chase. Stylistically, Fun You Can Feel, I would say, teeters the line between a bedroom pop and an Etronica sound. Utilizing his own vocals for a majority of the record, Charlie plays around with a very stylized vocal processing. It's not auto-tune for the sake of auto-tune, it's auto-tune for the sake of a style. A style that is very quite common found in these kind of bedroom pop and Etronica sounds. But rather than talk about the kind of highlights and lowlights from the project as a whole, it is short enough and with only seven songs that I think we can kind of go one by one of each track. Here. So to kick us off, it's a whole new year starts the track list and kind of acts as a preface to the record in both its lead in and its under two minute runtime. It's a yes, quick track, but it sets the precedent for the incoming tracks with its bright and cheery production. Secondhand Smoke is next up in the track list and probably my favorite from the album. It's got these little vocal chops few and far between that really hit in all the right spots for me. Those vocal chops can be seen as a bit of a bedroom pop trope of sorts but executed to a T here, I would say. And it really, I don't know, is not too much on the nose and really brings out some of the production that Charlie is sort of known for. With no real structural highs or lows, this is a truly relaxing track. Ibis Park is up next and really starts to ramp up the energy for the project. Ramping up the speed, pitching up the vocals, and keeping those chops very present gives the track a lot of life. But practically at just two minutes long, it really doesn't provide the song a ton of area to grow. But that being said, this really is the sort of MO of Charlie and this alias. A lot of his songs across his entire discography are kind of this short. Actually, of all of his seven albums, this two minute track is just higher than average runtime for any track on any album. In fact, I should be thankful that all but one song on this album is longer than two minutes because that is not the norm for Charlie. 18 is the next track on this record and acts as the primary single for the project. Opting in for a bit of a quasi drop of sorts, the punchy bass lines and subtle guitar riffs get their own little time to shine. It does feel a little bit more like a commercial song structure for a kind of bedroom pop style, but uh, I think it works really well. And using the energy built upon prior, 18 falls into a rocking instrumental with an electric lead and kit supported melody line, only to fall back down just as quickly into that somber reflective outro. Good news, right? Uh, takes a pseudo rock style with that repetitive, still no news, but there's good news, right? motto repeated time and time again throughout this relatively short runtime. It sort of feels like and could be seen as a calling cry for honestly the world in this last couple of years. The sense of there's no real news out yet, but it's gonna be good, right? Right? Thematically, this follows the theme of growing and to stop either looking at the numbers in terms of any data sort or looking outwards. Obviously, the sentiment here is unique to Charlie and his real world experiences, but there is some parallel lines that can be drawn between this and his kind of music career up to this point. And in the most uh, insane track title ever, we've got uh, Dead Bodies and Lime Scooters up next. This is yet another track that explodes in the back end, only to bring it right back down for that outro. I love grand endings, and this song has that exactly, so I love the production on this one. That being said, to be fully honest and transparent with you, I have no idea what the song is talking about. 
The lyrics can be a little hard to hear sometimes, and I can't quite fully make out what he's trying to say in some areas and some lines. And because it's a relatively, he's a relatively unknown artist, there aren't lyrics anywhere online for anything. So I'm sort of just left guessing. And honestly, my closest guess is to just stay on task. That's the theme of to keep focused so you don't fall into a river while riding a lime scooter, which has um, happened a lot actually in the world of lime scooters, lime being a brand of rentable electronic scooters. And uh, yeah, if you've never seen one before, then that wouldn't make a whole ton of sense. But if you have, it's a funny like, ha ha, no, I do know what you're talking about. Bummed caps off the record and is a more acoustic driven raw finale, which really does feel right at home for the conclusion of the record. Charlie's vocals are strong here and the layered harmonies give the track a sense of finality that the others didn't quite have. In the end, this album is a solid mix of bedroom pop fused with Indietronica tropes that relies on the stylized processing of vocals and raw instrumentation. While at times the lyrics can be hard to understand, the carefree, lighthearted nature of the production carries true. Fun You Can Feel is truly a record that feels fun. And with that, this album will score a bowtied 7 out of 10. Well, thank you for sticking around and watching my review of this album. Let me know what you think of the album in the comment sections below. Let me know what you think about my review of the project. Did I get it right? Did I get it wrong? Did you not know about this record until this point? I'd love to know any and all thoughts in the comment section below. But uh, other than not, this has been Bowtide Media, and I'll see you guys in another video.